This is a talk about pipeline inventory and maximum working process. I'm going to teach this material in the test bed of the little field technology game. The concepts are general concept in capacity planning and throughput analysis, but I also like to see the instantiations in the little field game. For the time being, suppose in this production environment, we have set the maximum WRP, maximum number of loads that can be inside the system to 70. We have three contracts, contract one, we will get 750, contract two, 1000, contract three, 1250. Each product needs 60 kits and each kit we buy it for $10. Throughput for the time being is 5.5. Number of machines in a station three is one and utilization is 0.55. Number of machines in a station one is one and utilization is 0.6875. Number of machines in station two is one and utilization is 0.91667. And the process flow is like this. Orders come into the first station, then go to the second station, then go to the third, and then come back to the second station, and then they leave. That is the overall flow. And as operations management, our main responsibility is to create a smooth flow. Having said that, compute pipeline inventory. That is the absolute minimal inventory which we need. Flow time in the station one is three hours, in station two is four hours, and in station three is 2.4. Just to let you know, how did we get these numbers? Let me have a very quick review. Here, utilization is 0.55, and throughput is 5.5. Therefore, utilization is equal to throughput divided by capacity, and 0.5. 55 is equal to 5.5 divided by capacity. And therefore, RP is equal to 10. Now I have capacity equal to 10, 10 products per day, and therefore 24 hours, because this system is working in 24 hours, divided by 10 is 2.4 hours or indeed one over 10 day that is the time that we need in station three and that is where this 2.4 is coming from and if we continue computation for all other stations we will find it out that the capacity of the system is six per day and now we are performing at 5.5 throughput. Now, if you want to find the pipeline inventory, we can use two different procedures. One is using the Lidl's law. If we produce at capacity and if flow time is 9.4 hours and then I divide it by 24 to make it in day, then flow time times capacity would be the pipeline inventor. We can transform hour into day and use throughput per day or we can transform throughput per day into throughput per hour and use 9.4. In both of them we get the pipeline inventor. That is one way of computing the pipeline inventory. The other one is by using utilization. When R is equal to six per day, these are the capacities that I have computed in my previous video. When we say utilization is 60%, that means the processor is busy for 60% of time and idle for 40%. Therefore, for 60%, it is with one load and for 40%, with no load. 
And if we compute the average, that is where the utilization comes. And now, utilization of station one, that is the number of loads which are with that station, utilization of station two, and utilization of station three, and those are the number of loads with those three stations. On average, the minimum number of loads that are with those three stations, therefore, we can compute pipeline inventory by using utilization two, using utilization or Liddell's law, and this information can take us to computations of pipeline inventory, the minimal inventory for this system to work at that specific full capacity. Okay, now if we assume that the system is performing at capacity and assuming that we need to deliver the product in three days, therefore full capacity is here, we multiply it by flow time, and that is the maximum inventory that I have over there to be able to deliver the product in under three days, even at full capacity. So we set maximum WIP to 18. We do not allow more than 18 loads to come into the system. But we know that average WIP, average inventory, is always less than maximum WIP because it is either maximum WIP or less. Therefore, average WIP is always less than maximum WIP. And we also know that throughput is always less than capacity. Therefore, while here I'm finding the maximum WIP and here I'm using the capacity because then this capacity will be reduced to actual throughput and this will be reduced to average inventory. That two approximations still work because throughput is always under six and average working process is always under 18. The equation more or less remains valid, but in the game, you need to look over there. Sometimes you see while you have set the maximum WIP to 18, your flow time is a little bit more than three days, then you need to reduce it. Sometimes, you know, while you have set it over there, your flow time is reasonably under three days. So you may a little bit increase it. You may bring it down to 17 or yeah, increase it to 19. This is a good initial estimate, but in the game, we need to have a look over. Now compute the pipeline inventory and max WIP for the case when we have three machines in station one, three machines in station two, and two machines in station three, and demand is 16. Just for the practice, theoretical flow time still is what it was before, because no matter how many machines do we have, to pass the product from station one, we still need three hours, no matter one machine we have or one million machines. And to pass the product through station three, we need 2.4. Two rounds of passing the material from station two also needs four hours, no matter how many machines are there. Therefore, theoretical flow time is 9.4 or 9.4 divided by 24 days. Okay, having said that, Capacity of station one, capacity of one machine is eight, capacity of three machines is 20, capacity of station two, three machines, and capacity of one machine is 16, that is 18, and for station three, it is 20. And therefore, the process capacity is the minimum of 24, 18, and 20, which is 18. And since the demand is 16, then According to Little's law, throughput times theoretical flow time is equal to pipeline inventory. But we said there are more than one procedure to compute theoretical flow time, and another procedure that we introduced was using realizations. If throughput is 16, and if these are the capacities of the three stations, we can simply compute utilization in each station. And then if we add these three numbers together, we get 2.36. 2.36? Where did I go wrong? Because in my 
previous computation, I got pipeline inventory equal to 6.26. How come it is now 2.36? Where I did go wrong. I did go wrong because I did not consider the number of machines in each station. Yes, this is utilization station 1.67. That means anything which is there is busy for 0.67 of time, 67% of time. That means on average, it is with 0.67 load. Everything over there on average is with 0.67 loads, but there are three of them over there. So I cannot just write this one. I should write three times its utilization plus three, which is for a station two, plus two, which is for a station three. And then when I add them up, I get the same number. Suppose we need to deliver the product in three days. What is the maximum allowable inventory, what is max WIP. We use capacity because we are estimating maximum WIP. We use capacity. Then maximum WIP would be always greater than average WIP. And throughput will always be lower than capacity. Therefore, while we are estimating pipeline inventory, based on capacity and based on max WIP because this one when becomes inventory it gets smaller and this one when becomes throughput it gets smaller still we can hope to deliver in three or less days we use these two because we know them, but these two, we really do not know them. After setting these two, we can look at this real life situation and see what will happen to the other two. If we put these numbers, capacity, which is 18, flow time, which is three, if we put it into the equation, we get max WIP equal to 54. We can allow 54 inside our system, but if we were under a contract which expects us to deliver the product in one day or less, then the maximum WIP should be set to 18. If we need to deliver in 0.5 days, then the maximum WIP will be 9. Again, this is our estimate. When game is running, we need to look around. Sometimes we can increase it by one or two. Sometimes we need to decrease it by one or two and all depends on the variability in demand and also variability in processing times but let's only be concerned about variability in demand for the time being. Okay let's do a little bit more computations. Theoretical flow time in all cases no matter how many machines are there no matter what throughput is Theoretical flow time is always 9.4 hours or 9.4 divided by 24 days because we work 24 hours. That is theoretical flow time. Under these number of machines in the last assumptions, the process capacity is 18 and throughput is 16. Cycle time. What is cycle time? Up to now we have defined flow time. This one is the theoretical flow time. What is the difference between theoretical flow time and flow time? Theoretical flow time only considers the times with the processors. Only the time that is real value at a time makes the load closer to its final shape, final form, final quality, final everything. These times are considered in theoretical flow time. 
But what is flow time? Flow time also includes the time that these parts spend in waiting lines. And also if we have finished good inventory work. Therefore, the difference between theoretical flow time and flow time is the time that loads spend in waiting lines. We also have something called very theoretical flow time. Very theoretical flow time are the times that I have shown in blue, these times. But it is when we go inside each of these processes and try by training, by improving new technology, by improving methods, by, by improving management techniques, by implementing new technologies, we try to reduce this time, to make this time smaller. Then if we add those times, those times will form very theoretical flow time. Very theoretical flow time means we have flow time, we have gone inside value-added activities, and we have tried to eliminate non-value adding parts of those activities. And that is done by implementing better technology, improving methods, training, and better management. So that is theoretical flow time, flow time, and very theoretical flow time. But what is cycle time? Cycle time is the capability of the process to send out two consecutive parts. The time that it takes for the process, the time between two consecutive parts. Therefore, it is mainly related to capacity. So if in one day we produce 18 units, how long does it take to produce one unit? That is what we call it as cycle time. One multiplied by one, divided by 18, which is one over 18 days. Or if I multiply by 24, that is 1.33 hours. Don't forget the capacity of the process was the capacity of the bottleneck. No matter what the other resource pools can do, a chain is as strong as its weakest link here. Capacity was 18. Therefore, in one day, we can send out 18 products. We can send out one product in one over 18 day. And if you multiply that by 24, it is 1.33. Every 1.33 hours, we can send out another product. That is capability of the system. Having said that, what is tack time? Tack time is the time interval when market needs two consecutive products. So cycle time goes to capability of the process. Tack time goes to requirements of the market. Here, our throughput was 16, and we assume it was defined by the market. Therefore, in one day, we can send out 16. In how many days? We can send out one product, and therefore, and therefore, tack time is equal to 1.5 hours. Note that while throughput is always less than or equal to capacity, tact time, what the market needs, is always greater than or equal to cycle time. Otherwise, if market needs us to send out one product every one hour, and if we can send out one product in every 1.33 Hour, we can never meet the market. In a stable system, throughput is always less than capacity. And tack time, which is related to throughput, is always greater than or equal to cycle time. Thank you very much for attending this session.